Hi Booktube and uh, welcome to what I think is going to be the last instalment of Proust vlog. Um, so last night I stayed up until about one in the morning and that was because I was finishing uh, In Search of Lost Time or uh, Remembrance of Things Past uh, as it is here. And, and actually now that I've reached the end and read through Time Regained, the last volume. Um, I will say that I actually prefer the slightly more modern um, English title, uh, In Search of Lost Time. I think that, for one, it's more literal to the original French, uh, but also it does actually get behind the idea of, of the novel um, a bit as well, and um, particularly the preoccupations coming up as you get towards the end. Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of get why, um, who was it, uh, Scott Moncrief came up with that. Um, but anyway, I've, I've <laughs> all of that is to say, I, I finished this last night and through every volume, as I've been reading this over the last, um, 15 months or so, I've been sharing my thoughts, um, and over the last couple felt myself speeding up a bit, I think just as I'm approaching the end and getting excited to see how it develops, but also just becoming more and more comfortable with the way that Proust writes, I think as well. Um, I, I found that I was struggling to kind of collect everything and make the vlogs in time. Um, and so I've managed to make a vlog for the captive, which will go up before this. Um, but today I'm just going to talk about the last two volumes and my, my general feelings about having finished it. Um, I'm not going to read out any quotations from the last two volumes, um, mainly because the ones that stood out and the ones I noted, um, I think might give away a little too much of what goes on. Um, but I'll go through what I kind of like about them uh, and um, yeah, sort of the general things that stood out, I suppose. Um, so um, we left the the captive with um, essentially um, this situation where Albertine is um, I don't I don't want to say forcibly living with our narrator because it's not forcibly um, but she's a bit of a kept woman I suppose um, and the the volume ends. Uh, with her leaving. I don't think it's too much of a, of a, of a spoiler since the next uh, the next volume is called The Fugitive and it's um, at least the first half of, of the volume is the narrator coming to terms with um, uh, with, with, with life without Albertine and with, with this breakup, with this absence um, and a few other things happen that I won't go up to, uh, won't go into, because I don't want to spoil uh, the plot too much. But what I really like about, I suppose, the second half of the fugitive, and the, um, and really the whole of time regained, is that we're suddenly getting these jumps in time, which we get every now and then, in um, in in the rest of the book earlier on. Um, but these are really quite stark, sudden jumps in time where the narrator is almost a completely different person to the person we've got used to because we've spent, spent so much time in his adolescence and probably sort of early 20s and his 20s and um, and then suddenly we, we, we jump to maybe when he's later in his 20s or something on a holiday in Venice and then uh, to when he's a bit older again. Um, and then but by the end of the book, where I suppose it's set in the 20s, uh, at the end of the book, he's probably in his 50s or something like that, and he's <laughs> suddenly coming to the realisation that he's um, he, he's old. <laughs> he's not a, he's, well, he's certainly not a young man anymore, and people, um, people see him that way as well. It, uh, it's not just how he sees himself, but how people see him and all the people he's known of much older and, and I really really liked that and I, I liked the fact that uh, I suppose that through a lot of the book uh, 
Marcel, uh, the main character, is not a particularly likable person. Um, and I think, you know, through the whole thing, there, there are two Marcels. There's the Marcel being remembered and the Marcel remembering. And I think the, the, the Marcel remembering does a really good job of putting us right in the sort of the head of uh, that earlier version of himself. Um, so that you're just wrapped up in how self um, <laughs> involved he is and um, you know it's a ridiculous amount of self-importance and snobbery and stuff like that um, but by the end it's um, you kind of see it's a, an incredible kind of confidence in a way because um, he's the, the, the later Marcel, he's now much older, much, a little more bitter uh, and disillusioned. Um, he's much more solitary, uh, less of a kind of gadfly, and uh, he's not spending that much time in society. Um, and you, you just kind of see how comfortable he is with presenting this past version of himself. And he can probably see just as clearly as as we do how superficial and, and stupid uh, this earlier version of himself is. Um, and yet, I mean, I think we would all be tempted to make changes in that kind of situation. And he probably does make changes. And I'm speaking of a fictional version of Marcel Proust, who is kind of, in a way, doing the same thing that Marcel Proust is. Is doing. I'm, I'm not sure if I have the layers of, the, of this meta narrative um, all lined up correctly in my head. Um, but yeah, what what you know what he's doing is he, he he's yeah just just presenting it um, and in a very unashamed way. And he might not be saying this is the best way to live. He. He's almost inviting us to see how, how ridiculous and, and stupid it is. Um, and I don't know, but by, by the end, I'm just impressed by that honesty, um, even though it's not completely honest uh, and the kind of confidence um, it at least presents. So, yeah, that's kind of how I'm feeling about, about it. A kind of, I'm just kind of impressed um, not, not even for just how, how big it is and him pulling it off, but just for that sentiment, I suppose. Uh, the, the end of the book is, um, without telling you sort of what happens and what Proust is saying, I had an interesting feeling at, at the end. It wasn't a, a crazy mountaintop moment for me. Um, it was... Um, it just felt like I was finishing a novel. Um, it, it, it wasn't anything more heightened than that. It was just um, a profound but very comfortable uh, satisfaction, I suppose, um, which I actually quite like um, because there, there is something, even though it's a, a massive book and it's a very ambitious book and a very hard thing to pull off. Um, all the way through, there's something very subdued to it as well. Um, and so I think it's only fitting that, um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't an explosive fireworks kind of ending, uh, but instead it was, um, I don't know, just a, a nice reflective deep breath. So there we go. That, that's that's all I got to say really today about about Proust, about finishing it. I'm um, not too sure what I'm going to do with my life now. Um, I've still been reading a bit about Fernando Pessoa, so I'll probably keep myself quite busy with that. But I'll be back soon uh, with a video called something like Is Proust Worth It? And I'll just sort of weigh up the, the pros and cons as a, a more general reflection on, on the, the 
book in its entirety. Um, but there we go. Uh, so thanks for, for joining me on, on this Proust vlog. And um, we'll, we'll see what happens next. I'll, I'll have to do something like this again. Um, so thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you soon.